This is my new musical bipolar Tesla coil. Most of it's made from parts that you can get at a hardware store or just order online. And my resonant driver circuit is housed inside of that army surplus ammunition case. And when I plug this Tesla coil into my guitar amp, this is what it sounds like. So this guy right here is my new Tesla coil. And I'm gonna teach you today how it works. And to do that, I'm gonna get the help of a wine glass because they actually have a lot in common. See, when you hit a wine glass, it will ring at its resonant frequency. And understanding resonant frequency is gonna be the key to understanding how this Tesla coil works. So, what does a wine glass and this Tesla coil have in common? So I've always wanted to build a Tesla coil. Ever since I was a kid playing Red Alert 2, uh, building those little towers and sending out lightning bolts, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Getting into talking about how Tesla coils work, we're gonna have to talk a bit about resonant frequency and what that is. So resonant frequency is the frequency a wave will naturally resonate inside of an object. So in a really common example of an acoustic resonant frequency is the wine glass. And a wine glass will naturally ring at a certain note when you uh, rub your finger around the outside edge of the glass or uh, give it a quick tap or something like that. And you've probably seen the example before of an opera singer breaking the wine glass with the voice. Obviously not just an opera singer, but anybody can do this. So here are some examples. Today I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to try to shatter this wine glass with just my voice. Let's give it a try. In the wine glass, what's happening is as the person sings the note and the vibrations are coming out and hitting the glass, if it's at the resonant frequency that the wine glass wants to naturally ring at, that wave will just go up and down the wine glass and get stronger and stronger until it hits a point which the bending and contracting of the material surface of the glass will just end up being too much for the strength of the material and it'll end up breaking. So a Tesla coil is very similar in operation, except in this case, of course, we don't have somebody singing a, a note. So what we have is the primary coil, which is the larger coil in the Tesla coil. And there's gonna be an oscillating electromagnetic field that's happening at, in my case, 140 kilohertz. That's the resonant frequency of my Tesla coil. And that frequency in the primary is paired to the resonant frequency of the secondary coil. As the primary coil has that oscillating electromagnetic field, it's pushing and pulling on the wave inside of the secondary at the resonant frequency. And just like the wine glass, the wave will just keep growing and growing until we reach a breakdown threshold. And in the case of the Tesla coil, high voltage arcs will start to shoot out from the top. So if that kind of made sense to you, then you kind of understand how we make a Tesla coil make the high voltage arcs, but how do I make it play music? So the Tesla coil's resonant frequency is 140 kilohertz, and that is well outside the human hearing range. The human hearing typically can pick up frequencies of about 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So to make it play music, we're gonna take that 140 kilohertz in the primary coil and turn it on and off at whatever frequency is the audio or sound signal that we want it to play. So if I played a tone that was say 300 Hertz, essentially 300 times a second, it's gonna turn on the 140 kilohertz frequency, which is used to induce a high voltage in the secondary coil. 